Hello and welcome to the Inu series of Drishti IAS. I am Pooja. Today we are going to analyze the Chola dynasty, the facts related to it as well as the understanding for a better means answer writing will be discussed. So why are we discussing it? It must be very important for you to know because of course news is an important part and GS mains paper 1 plus prelims. These two are the targets we are going to dedicate be dedicated to. So you see that Chola dynasty sifting through the myths and facts. Why? Because magnum opus of Mani Rattam, the Ponyan Silvan 1 is set to be launched and it is of course going to echo in your question paper because UPSC loves current affairs. So moving on, if we discuss the first thing about the entire segment that is of course the Chola dynasty. The Chola dynasty are actually, they were actually South Indian Tamil rulers of basically unknown antiquity antedating the early Sangam poems because they have been mentioned in the Sangam poems. The dynasty it originated in the rich Kavi, Kaveri river. So this is because I have taken it from the NCRT. This is the region and specifically this region is belonging to the Chola dynasty. Do one thing for sure, look at the modern cities in your, for your homework where Chola dynasty had a rule before the modern times. So this as you can see is a fluctuating border. Sometimes some kings had the reach towards this border and they dethroned the rule of that king from over there. So this was a fluctuating boundary. So Urayur, which is now Tiruchirapalli, was its oldest capital and the legendary king Karikan was the common ancestors between the major rulers of the dynasty of the south. So they get their name from Chora or Chola. C-H-O-D-A. Chora or Chola. Okay. So the Chola country, Koromandal, it stretched from the Vaigai river in the south to Todai Mandalam, which is the, cap the capital of which was Kachi. Now Kanchipuram in the north. Okay. So you can see the Cholas are over here and here we have in the Kerala the Kerala Puttas or Cheras and then Pandya. So Cheras, Pandyas and Cholas, they used to rule in the South India. Many a times it happens we, uh, when we read, we are so engrossed into our preparation for North Indian kings, Central Indian kings, but very importantly, we have to ensure that we know about the South Indian dynasties as well. A minor chiefly family they belong to, uh, which was known as the Muttarayar. And they were subordinate to the Pallava kings of Kanchipuram. Pallavas had their uh, capital at Kanchi, remember that. Vijayala captured the delta from the Muttarayar. Okay. So from Muttarayar, from this clan they you, you used to belong to, Vijayala is said to be the one who started this dynasty. And that is in the middle of the 9th century. Thanjavur and a temple for goddess Nishumbhada Shundani is located over there. So Pallavas generally were known for their very beautiful and intricate structures for temples. But when Chola dynasty came into the picture, they also started in order to emasculate the Pallava dynasty. They also started to build big and huge ornately decorated temples. The successors of Vijayala then conquered the neighboring regions about whom we are going to talk about in the rulers. The Pandyan and the Pallava territories to the south and north were made part of the kingdom. So, once the capturing was done, the kingdom, it enlarged in size. Okay, moving ahead. Now, important rulers, if we talk about, they generally used to get the titles of Para Keshari Varman and Raja Keshari Varman alternately, although the chronology is not very clear. Vijayala began the occupation of the territories of the Pallavas, remember, draw, try to draw a tree, a kind of family tree. Then it was extended under Aditya 1. Okay. Then comes Parantaka 1, who basically was one of the important rulers of the dynasty. He was known as the destroyer of Madurai. This is an important fact for prelims. Who is known as the destroyer of Madurai? Parantaka 1. Also defeated the Sinhalese invaders, united the lands of Cholas and Pandyas between 926 to 942. Then coming to terms with the Rashtrakutas, he came into terms with the Rashtrakutas and took Nellore from them about 940. So you see, Parantaka started enlarging the expanse of the empire. Then comes Raja Rajavan, 
very important ruler of the most one of the most important rulers of the chola dynasty raja rajavan protected vengi which is near the godavari district he occupied the gangalbadi territory which is in the present karnataka state he inherited or defeated the western gangas by 1996 he had conquered kerala the chera country chera puttas um, and acquired northern sri lanka as well so remember all these facts apart from that he built the great brihadeeswara temple at tanjore we are going to talk about that as well and by 1014 raja raja had acquired lakshadweep and maldives island so basically naval power was enlarged in the chola kingdom during the chola kingdom it was seen that not only the mainland india but also other territories that are nearby the seas of india mainland india was captured by raja raja 1 then comes rajendra chola dev rajendra 1 so he placed a son on the throne at madurai then he completed the conquest of sri lanka which was started by his father in 1023 he sent an expedition to the north that penetrated into the ganges or the ganga river okay he brought the ganga waters to the new capital by the name of uh, the new capital was named ganga kondai cholapuram that means the the one who has been victorious over the regions of the ganges he conquered the portions of the malay peninsula as well and the malay archipelago so you see from south to south east also near the peninsular regions he was enlarging the capabilities the naval capabilities then raja dhiraja we have to talk about he fought the pandyas and cheras defeated the western chalukyas under a uh, ruler that back then it was ruler someshwara 1 remember that this this could be asked in your prelims raja dhiraj was killed at the battle of kopam in 1054 we will talk about the rulers at the decline of the dynasty as well stay engaged moving ahead let's talk about the administrative structure of the cholas basically they used to go over the idea of sustained monarchy so monarchy was something that is of course not only restricted to the world uh, the other parts of the world other than india but uh, of course india as well kingdom was divided into provinces provinces were known as mandalams separate governors were held in charge for each mandalam okay so mandalam was a province then province was divided into districts which were called nadus tamil nadu something like that so nadus were under uh, provinces that were mandalam so first we have mandalam then we have nadu each village acted as a self governing unit so decentralized form of government was there and the king remained the central authority so we see that provinces were there then nadu and then ur was also there which is a settlement of peasants so before uh, any sort of ideas come into your mind that decentralized uh, governance is only in modern india was never existing back in the ancient times that's wrong because here we see decentralized uh, administration but the central authority was the king who would make the major decisions with respect to the governance okay so look at the localized nature taxes and revenue models was were handled by these decentralized authorities rich peasants something some terms which might come into your prelims rich peasants were the velala caste they exercised considerable control over the affairs of the nadu that means the village village region and this is uh, so a central uh, this is done by the central chola government so central chola government made them the heads of such things the chola kings gave some rich land owner titles like muven the velan that is a velan or present the pre peasant that is serving three kings okay arayar that is the chief so these are the terms arayar muven the velan velala remember all these apart from that these title these titles were given for a particular reason because they were interested with important offices of the state at the center okay moving ahead let's talk about the great living temples of the cholas which are actually a part of unesco world heritage so as i told you in the beginning of the segment pallavas were very well known for the temple architecture then comes the cholas so when cholas came into the picture they started building such ornate and beautiful temples so that they could look better than the previous rulers to emasculate their uh, previous uh, the previous rulers they started to do that uh, also we know that whenever a temple used to be built in the ancient india it wasn't just a temple for worship but a town started to 
built around it why because it provided a lot of industry to the people who were working there so first we have to talk about the three great living temples over here other temples are also there because of the paucity of time we will talk about the important ones brihadeshwara temple is at thanjavur okay he was it was constructed by raja raja 1 in 1010 okay then we also have another brihadeshwara temple that is by rajendra chola and that is situated at ganga chola ganga konda cholapuram okay that was built in 1035 then comes the aravateshwara temple darasuram that was constructed by raja raja the second in 1166 okay moving ahead let's talk about them uh, in brief so the brihadeshwara temple which was constructed by raja raja one is also known as thanjavur big temple and in the inscription it is known as dakshina meru remember that prelims fact and it is completely made of granite which was very interesting because granite was not originating from in the place where it is built but it is garnered from the hillocks of mamallai okay and it is not bound no binding procedure was there in terms of building it but interlocking patterns were there which was very mysterious back then the temple was built by raja raja chola in 1010 the grand structure celebrated its thousandth year in september 2010 the temple has the world's tallest temple tower that is the vimanam and the huge nandi statue at the entrance is carved out of a single rock that is it is monolithic which is weighing 20 tons the statue of the main deity is lord shiva and it's 12 feet so they were shavites the chola dynasty rulers were shavite and it is situated of course we have to know this it is situated at the banks of the kaveri river let's see the uh, the picture of the brihadeshwara temple at thanjavur okay or tanjur built by raja raja one then comes second temple that is also brihadeshwara temple but it is at ganga kondai cholapuram built by rajendra one and it is in the perambalur district remember this apart from that of course they were shavite so they built it for shiva lord shiva and it was in uh, i have already written it there but here it has been written twice sorry for that in the year 1035 when rajendra one shifted the capital from tanjavu to ganga kondai cholapuram and the spire which is the vimana tower it towers to a height of 55 meters it is 9 meters short from the previous counterpart of brihadeshwara that was by his father some analysts historians uh, historical people also say that uh, it was because he respected his father so much so he never wanted to surpass the vimanam height of his father's temple of his father's temple that he built and the lingam there is said to be the tallest lingam in the world that is of 30 feet moving ahead this is the this is the particular temple that we are talking about at ganga kondai cholpuram then comes eravateshwara temple by the name of eravat it has derived its name eravat is the um, the elephant of god indra so it is believed that eravat used to visit there to worship so eravateshwara temple at darasuram is eravat is of course a white elephant remember that at darasuram it was built by the great chola king raja raja II. And it is placed third after the two famous temples we have already discussed about. It is smaller than the other two. Okay, we will show how. There is a very important fact about this particular temple is that the miniature panels it has with inscriptions that tell stories which is which are associated with 63 Nayanars. So Nayanars or Alvars. Alvars were a uh, Vaishnavite. They they uh, the Alvars used to worship God Vishnu. And Nanmars or Nayanars, they used to worship God, of course, Shiva. So, the front mandapa is known in the inscription as Raja Gambhiran Tiru Mandapam. Remember that. This could be a prelims fact. It is unique as it was conceptualized as a chariot with wheels. So, it was a new feature. The construction of a separate temple for Devi was slightly later than the main temple. And it indicates that the emergence of the Amman shrine as an essential component of the South Indian temples emerged from here only. Now moving ahead, let's, saw the, uh, let's see the Aravateshwara temple. This is the temple that we were talking about. Moving ahead, let's talk about Chola sculpture. The very important one being the Natraj sculpture, the Natraj bronze sculpture, which is very elegant in nature. So elegance, sensitive modeling, as well as balance tension increased at the time of the Chola dynasty. The realism and attention to final details were seen in the sculptures. Clear demarcation of the areas of the body were also seen. 
the creases between the torso and the stomach so fine the how fine the sculpture was started to you can say started to begin from the chola dynasty around the navel sharp edges along the tibia after that we also have a pointed nose facial expressions are of one of the most noticeable features of the time such as the natraj image we see the natraj image here okay so chola empire ensured that not only their temples are elegant but also their sculptures it is also believed that august rodin the legendary french sculpture he praised the chola bronze natraj sculpture saying that it is une chose divinement religie that means something divinely decreed something that was made after a decree came from the divine or the god okay so this could be asked in prelims moving ahead let's talk about the decline so raja dhiraj fought the pandyas and cheras that we have already discussed defeated the western chalukya rulers so maveshwara won in 1046 but he was killed in the battle of kopan which was against the chalukyas only then comes kulotunga he succeeded both the cholas and eastern chalukya crowns because of the inheritance he wisely abandoned the deccan and concentrated on uniting the eastern coast so he changed the narrative from 1260 the hoysala king obtained lands in the chola country they relinquished or uh, they threw the relationship that they had with the cholas they were the feudatories of cholas the northern powers started to intervene in the southern india region the upheaval the upheaval that was created because of the power vacuum the pandya went for conquest of the chola ca- country in 1257 and chola dynasty ended in 1279 so this was all for me to ask a question about this empire i would like to ask you one thing arrange mandalam ur and nadu in the correct order from the highest area of administration to the lowest okay and for those who have answered my last question uh, please stay tuned so that i can take your name for the question that i asked right now you have to comment so that i can take your name in the next segment okay so crime in india 2021 report i asked uh, you about to answer let me just check yes so with respect to crime in india report it was published for the first time ever in 1953 that is correct okay it is published annually that is also correct and that 69th edition shows that rajasthan had the highest number of rape cases that is also correct so all three statements are correct was the correct answer c is the correct answer many of you have answered it correctly let me take their names faizu satvik abhay mr anonymous mini sharma chandrakant sudarshan shubham uh, alpha fox kishan sakshi uh, masuri then uh, shruti gaur shivan anandita and gaming gaming yt neha keshri prapti anshu ritik pallavi venkateswarlu uh, foodie boy adarsh tiwari has answered it correctly aditi no aditi it's actually c okay uh raghav has answered it correctly also shruti shruti has answered it correctly then pargavi has answered it correctly niketa also dharamrat anuj vishwanathan gautam anyas also alok tushita and uh, aspirant kushwant rupal pragati also aditi birla and of course himanshu has answered it correctly and simran also thank you so much for answering the last question answer this question as well that's all for today thank you so much for watching